Hey everyone, today I wanted to take a moment to talk about schizoaffective disorder and pain. Now, in my particular case, I have schizoaffective bipolar disorder, so I get all the best of schizophrenia and all the best of the bipolar and plus some other things. Too. So, um, I, you know, I get the best of all worlds. I can't complain that way. Now, when I go into a depression, and I prefer depression over um, the manic phase because I am dangerous when I'm manic. Dangerous not meaning I kill people, but dangerous meaning it's expensive. I tend to buy things. I have way too much energy. Um, I feel like I'm the king of the world, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'd much rather just be normal or depressed because depressed is the cheapest. Because when I get really depressed, I can't get out of bed. I am completely comatose. Um, they call it morbid depression, where I literally don't get out of bed. I literally sleep. Um, I just finished. The reason I'm doing this particular vlog is I just got out of one of those deep depressions where I literally spent 48 hours in bed almost completely. And I slept so much that I got chest pains, physical chest pains. I felt like I had, my chest was constricting, like it was filling with fluid, um, like I was getting sick. Uh, my, my joints, especially my hips, just ached. And even though I s sleep on both sides and I flip over on a regular basis, um, just being in bed that long is a physical pain. It's, it's painful to have that depression where you can't get out of bed, you, can't, you don't want to wake up. You really can't wake up, and you just lay there, and the best you can do is roll over, and it's it's agonizing, and it becomes agonizing after a couple of days. So there's a physical pain that goes with some of these deep depressions, and I wanted to share that. But most importantly, what I wanted to share, and what I did today, because uh, I'm feeling better, is um, I kept having this vision, and this particular depression that I just went through is one I've been through before. I go through this kind of depression. There's different types of depressions I go through, but this particular one is one of those weepy, crying depressions where everything just uh, burns, and you cry a lot. So I kept having this vision that I wanted to share of just having this like black hole here and and then these tears coming from here and from here just streaming down and your eyes just red because you're, you're always rubbing them and you're crying and um, that's what happened with me now it started a little bit before Robin Williams died which actually was kind of useful because it helped um, me focus because a lot of times people with mental illness and depression um, are in pain. They're in pain and the only way you get to funny in the case of Robin Williams and even with Joan Rivers is through pain. You don't get to funny without pain. It's not possible. I've never met anybody that could. So um, they can get to cute but they can never get to funny. Now I, I personally love to, to make jokes, and, and I've fancied myself a comic for a very, very long time. And I enjoy my pain um, because it makes great humor. Um, so I embrace what I have. And, and in this case, when I got really started to go down into like, before I got to the part where I couldn't function anymore, it really started to, to dawn on me. I'm like, how do I describe this to somebody that doesn't have uh, my condition or depression at all or you know this kind of feeling this pain that's inside and this is not the physical pain from laying in bed this is the emotional pain that goes on every single day and it's not because necessarily of anything it just is that's the hardest part to describe so I'm going to try to do it using what I pictured as like the globe the, the earth okay so what you have is you have the earth and there's a crust and under the crust is hot molten magma that gets hotter and hotter and more dense and more pressure until it's like super hot almost like the sun in the middle because of the pressure and so it's like a 
a nuclear reactor. Um, and it's so hot it melts rock. So what happens when you have an earthquake, for example? The earth goes back and forth and it makes cracks. And in some places it goes under and makes more molten lava. In other places it pops up the volcano and the lava shoots out. So there's always some kind of balance going on there, but there's always some kind of drama going on there too. So that's what it's like, this pain inside. And every little thing, every little day, every day that I can think of during this depression, everything got to me in some way, shape, or form. And Robin Williams' death got me thinking. John Rivers' death got me thinking. Um, all kinds of things got me thinking. And feeling. And when you have this pain inside, it's not, there's not because somebody said something bad to you or because you're feeling bad necessarily. You could be feeling great and laughing and joking, but the pain's there. It's always there. Sometimes it erupts, and I did this really sad face with tears streaming down in the depression, and that's like an eruption, like a volcanic eruption. It relieves pressure, it relieves tension. It's like the earthquake. It finally slips, and the tears come out, or you scream, or you completely shut down. So there's many ways to, to get balance in this pain. But this pain is like this whole world unto itself inside of you. And then you have all these voices, at least when you're, when you're schizo, like I am. So you have all these voices discussing the situation on a daily basis inside of you. So let's say you're sitting there and you listen to a song from your childhood. And it's this beautiful song, and you like the song, and they're belting it out to the balcony, and it just moves you. And suddenly, it's like watching, like you see, you know, watching opera, the tears come down. Okay, and it could be just any song. It doesn't have to be a sad song. It could be any song. And suddenly, you'll just have this, like, memory of nothing, but it feels like a memory, and you start to cry. And you cry and you cry and you cry and you cry and you cry. And then all the voices in your head start to discuss why you're crying. And they're trying to like solve the puzzle and insult you and congratulate you and everything else in between. Uh, it's like this busy little busy little bees all around in your head going blah, 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 with, their, with their opinions and, and, and their demands and everything else talking in your head as you're trying to deal with whatever it is this is. Now it's somehow it's locked in there. Somehow you've woven this song into a possible crying scenario that will generate a cry. Like there's some songs that instantaneously as soon as I hear them I'm wired to cry. Just wired, hardwired to cry. And they're not necessarily sad songs. They're just, for some reason, I have now wired them in me through various depression cycles that this is something that will trigger a crying, try, trigger crying for me. So when I need to cry, with the flip side, when I need to cry, this is very helpful. Because all I have to do is click on YouTube, watch you know the video or the song, or go to my i cloud thing or whatever it is that I library, music library, and um, play a song that I know I'm triggered to cry to, and fair enough, okay, I can turn it on, um, you know, basically with no problems. But there's something else. When you're feeling good, and when you're feeling happy, the pain, that little earth I'm talking about, that whole atmosphere that's inside of you, which is, I guess, part of the disease. I, I don't know. I never lived without it, so I don't know, you know, how else to describe it. But it's like this whole little earth. And even if you're happy, you know that soon enough, you're not going to be. So you're always on caution. It's like it kind of takes some of the happiness away, in, in a sense, because you know you shouldn't get too happy, because if you do then there's only one way that's down for a crash. And usually that's a deep, dark depression. And it can last. So you don't want to get effervescent, 
uh, for too long because you will go flat. Um, you know, it's, it's just it's the rules of the game uh, when it comes to schizoaffective bipolar disorder. So I just wanted to share that with people. And also, this sense that it has to take something to make any of this happen, it doesn't. It doesn't have to take anybody saying anything or any action outside of yourself or anything that you hear, sense, feel, smell, dream about, anything. This is all chemical. It all starts as chemical and it all ends as chemical. Now the ride in between, much different. It's just, it's, it's the ride. It's Disney. It's Las Vegas. It's flashing lights. It's, it's the whole nine yards. It's life. But... It doesn't take anyone or any person to start it, and it doesn't take, and no one can stop it. Not me, not anybody. I didn't start it. I didn't stop it. This is all a chemical, an involuntary kind of chemical reaction. So that's the hardest thing to get through to people's heads, is that it doesn't mean anything when, when somebody with um, a mood disorder for example, has a mood. It means that they have a chemical disorder in their brain that gives them these moods, whatever the mood is, or variety of moods. So it has nothing to do with you. It doesn't even have anything to do with me, and it's my mood. So when somebody comes along and says, I'm there for you, or that, this or that, now it's not like cancer or some kind of physical disease like having a flu or having pneumonia or something like that or you know even having HIV it's not like that it's not like having a disease you don't feel the love when you're depressed you don't feel it no matter what you do you could hire clowns and stand on your head and tickle me and tell IP and, and whatever you could do all that kind of stuff it's still not going to change my depression, and I'm still not going to feel it. And besides, I'm not going to feel it. I'm not going to want to feel it because I'm depressed. So, and it's, it's, it's not about me making that conscious decision that I don't want to feel it. I'd love to feel it in that time. I wish I could, but I just can't. And everybody I know that has these kind of mood disorders feels the same way. It's so frustrating. You want to feel, it's like the loneliest, like you could be, you could have a million really good friends and your tightest internet circle, maybe your top 50, could be right in the room with you. The top 50 people in your life could be in the room with you, holding your hand, telling you how much they love you, recanting the past from your birth until this moment and every special moment you've ever, ever spent together. And every lovely thing and the best aromatherapy and and you can have you know zen music going on and you can you know i'll be chanting and, and doing reiki and, and all that kind of stuff but as long as the chemicals in my brain and i'm depressed i still feel like i'm the only person in the room and all that noise that extra noise that you're making by trying to comfort me is just added on to all the voices in my head that are annoying me which is why I just want to go to sleep because I'm exhausted because I'm depressed. Um, so that's what it's really like. <laughs> uh, I know it sounds horrible, but it really isn't all that bad once you get used to it. Uh, once you get used to it, you learn to embrace that that darkness. You learn to embrace the tears. You learn to embrace the deep thought. You learn to embrace that whatever magic pearl or that magic moment comes out of that deep depression because every time you get depressed something gets on your mind and you dwell on it because you can't because that's all you can do to keep the voices quiet if you dwell on something then the voices kind of get pushed out a little bit they shut you know they're just blah, 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 instead of talking right at you all the time directly um i know it sounds weird but it's true <laughs> So you can learn something with every depression. You can learn something about yourself. You can learn something about the world. You can learn something just by observing. Um, you can observe 
on television. You can, if you can drag yourself out of bed, you can and sit and observe people's behavior online, for example. And um, I noticed in this last um, depression, for example, that a lot of people, there's a lot of people, and you know, there's there's the normal people, which is the majority of people, and there's us, you know, diagnosed abnormal people. Um, I have a couple of groups I belong to, and even, you know, in the groups, it's very obvious. They beat themselves up a lot, and I beat myself up a lot because I'm not living up to some normal expectation. And I learned years ago that, that you can't do that. I can't do that. I'm not normal, so I'm not going to be your slice of lemon in your club soda. I'm always going to be your unexpected twist of tangerine or squirt of kumquat. I'm not going to be your lemon slice because um, that's expected. Uh, I'm not the expected. I am the unexpected, but in a fun, different way, not in a you know dangerous, creepy way. What I learned though is that if you if you slip, and it's almost like being an, an addicted person because you learn from society that normal is what you're supposed to aspire to. So think of that as a negative thing, like being an alcoholic or a drug addict. Okay, so you have to monitor that every day to make sure that you stop expecting that of yourself because if you keep expecting it of yourself, you will be feeling bad. And you'll be at your lowest point or you'll stay at a low point. But if you can manage that expectation and change, you know, and and put and embrace your abnormalities and your embrace your crazy in my case or it could be a physical thing for example my psoriasis embrace that you know it's ugly it's you know it looks like Frankenstein you have to embrace it not everybody has it so you know that is just what makes you unique you're special and so you take down this normal peg and then you learn to embrace yourself and how you're doing with your own expectations on the way you behave and, and all these things that you can control. And then suddenly you'll find that stitch of happiness that is missing when you're constantly trying to compare yourself to something that you're not. It's like me trying to compare myself to some um, 70 year old widowed woman with a hysterectomy long after menopause. I, I can't compete. I, I can't even fathom what that would be like. Uh, all the, you know, losing the spouse and losing your, you know, insides and going through menopause and the whole nine yards. I, all that stuff, that whole life experience is beyond me. And I wouldn't want to try let alone with this woman, this imaginary woman I just made up, would want to try to be me. She couldn't, no matter how hard she tried, no matter how much she went to school, no matter how much she studied, she couldn't do it, no matter how hard she tried. That's just the simple fact. She'll never be a gay man. Never happen. She'll never be mentally ill. She'll never have the physical ailments I have, and all the things combined that make me. So that's what I wanted to get out today. I hope, I hope this helps me in the future, but I also I hope that someone watches this and goes, oh, okay, now I understand. And I, like I said, I always make these videos for myself for future reference, but I also make these in the hopes that if somebody needs to watch it, they find it. And they watch, maybe you're a spouse of someone that has depression and you can't figure this this magic thing out that it's not about you and it's not even about them and the more you put energy into taking it personally the more it's going to frustrate you and exhaust you and then you're going to finally snap and your relationship which might be wonderful otherwise uh, will be destroyed for no reason <clears throat> that's important and for the person that's depressed, stop taking it so personally. Your own depression, don't take it so personally. Really, it has nothing to do with you. And you really have no control over it. Because if you did, 
You wouldn't be depressed, now would you? Think about it. common sense. Have a good one.